Haldane effect is an important concept in the transport of carbon dioxide. In this video, I am going to tell you what is Haldane effect and what is the carbon dioxide dissociation curve. Hey everyone, welcome back to HM Learnings. I am Harshita, the creator of HM Learnings, where students come to clear their concept and to get the study material. Make sure that you have subscribed my channel. You can also follow HM Learnings on Instagram, Facebook and today we are back with a long gap and we are completing our uh, video on the transport of carbon dioxide. So in the previous vid uh, video, we have uh, seen uh, the transport of the carbon dioxide that it is happening in the three different forms the bicarbonate form, the dissolved form and in the carboamino hemoglobin and we have also talked about the chloride shift and the Hamburg or the hamburger shift and uh, actually in the previous video there was some error so uh, as you if you remember in the previous video we have seen uh, a table which is showing the carriage of carriage of the carbon dioxide in the three forms in the arterial blood and in the mixed venous blood so this is this uh, table is showing the total uh, that uh, how these three different forms of the carbon dioxide is contributing what percentage of the carbon dioxide is actually transporting in these three forms and this was shown in the arterial blood as well as in the mixed meal blood so the error was here uh, in which the percentage which were mentioned were actually not of the mixed venous blood so here you can see that about 88.5 percent of the carbon dioxide that is of uh, 52 ml of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of blood is transported in the bicarbonate form and about 5% and 6% are being transported in the dissolved form and in the carboamino compounds of 52 ml of carbon dioxide 100 ml of blood and the percentages which were mistakenly uh, plotted here was not for the mixed penis blood but actually for this incremental total carbon dioxide so if you can see that there is an increment of about 4 ml per 100 ml of the blood okay so this 4 ml the uh, of this 4 ml 69 percent is being carried in the form of bicarbonate ions and 21 percent is being carried in the bicarbonate uh, bicarbon uh, bicarbonate compounds and the 10 percent is being carried in the dissolved form okay so uh, this was a mistake which you have to correct also now after this, we have seen the carbon dioxide transport via the plasma in the erythrocytes and the chloride shift. So now in this video, we are going to talk about a very, very important concept, uh, which is the Haldane effect and the carbon dioxide dissociation curve. So you can see here that this is a curve and the curve is having the y-axis and the x-axis. So x-axis is showing the PCO2 in the MMHC and the y-axis is actually showing the total content of the carbon dioxide that is ml of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of the blood. And it is, uh, so this curve is actually showing the relationship between the PCO2 and the total carbon dioxide content in the blood. So you can see that as the PCO2 level is increasing, what is happening? The total content of the carbon dioxide in the blood is also increasing. But apart from this, uh, we have to remember that it's not only the PCO2 which is affecting the carbon dioxide transport. It is obvious that if the PCO2 level is increasing, the total content of the carbon dioxide in the blood will increase. Uh, we know it can be explained by the Henry's law which say that the dissolved, uh, uh, dissolved uh, content of the carbon dioxide will uh, of any gas will increase if the partial pressure of that gas will increase. They have a directly proportional relationship. But it's not only the PCO2 which is affecting the transport of the carbon dioxide but the other factors like the partial pressure of the oxygen and the pH these two are also affecting the carbon dioxide transport so pH is somehow we can uh, understand by the same as the PCO2 if the PCO2 is rising the pH is falling so the total content of the carbon dioxide in the blood will increase but what happens 
with respect to the PO2. So this has been explained by an effect called as the Haldane effect. So Haldane effect, effect explains that how if you are varying the PO2 levels with the same range within the same range of the PCO2, what would happen to the total content of the carbon dioxide in the blood? So this can be explained by this graph. So you can see here. There are about three graphs. Okay, so you are having a blue graph, magenta, and the red one. So all these are actually being. You can see that as the PCO2 level is increasing, all three are actually showing the increase in the total content of the carbon dioxide in the blood. So the range in which these three graphs are plotted is actually same. The range in which uh, uh, that is versus PCO2. So the PCO2 range against which three these three curves are plotted are actually the same. Like all these three curves are plotted from 10 mm Hg of PCO2 to it uh, about 80 mm Hg of PCO2. So the PCO2 is kept constant because we want to study, we want to see the effect of the another variable, which is the PO2. So if we want to see the effect of the PO2, we need to keep the Other variable constant, which is the PCO2. So we are varying the PO2 levels, and the variation in the PO2 level has been seen by seeing the saturation of the hemoglobin by the oxygen. Okay, so the only thing which is varying in these three curves is actually the saturation of the hemoglobin with the oxygen, but the PCO2 level against which they are plotted are actually the same. So you can see that as the Uh, if if as the PCO2 level is rising, the carbon dioxide content, total blood carbon dioxide content, is increasing in all of these three. So if we can see, there are two points plotted here, A and B. So what is A? If you can see, the uh, PCO2 is around 40 mm Hg at A. And here the hemoglobin is nine. This graph is plotted when the hemoglobin is ninety-seven point five percent saturated with the hemoglobin. So uh, now, what is uh, you can see that this this must be similar to that of the arterial blood, which is having a PCO two of forty mmHg and the oxygen content of about. and oxygen content or the saturation of the hemoglobin around 97.5%. Now if you see the B point mixed venous blood you can see that this is analogous to about around 45 or 46 mmHg and here this graph is plotted at 75% of the saturation of the hemoglobin. So these two graphs you can see that this must be the venous blood so you can see that and it the, if you can draw a line here you can see that the arterial blood is having a concentration is having a total content of carbon dioxide 48 ml of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of blood and the venous blood is having around 52 ml of the oxys, uh, carbon dioxide in 100 ml of blood so there is increment of about 4, 4 ml of carbon dioxide per 100 ml of blood with changing of uh, pco2 from 40 to 60 mmhg that is of a change of about 6 mmhg so you are changing pco2 by 6 mmhg and you are having a increment of about 4 ml of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of blood now you can see that that this is the relation which they are plotting this is the relation from the arterial point to the venous blood artery cons uh, corresponds to 40 mm Hg of the pco2 which is having 48 ml of carbon dioxide and venous is having a pco2 of about 46 mm Hg with an arterial content of about 52 ml so there is an increment of 4 by changing the pco2 by 6 mm Hg now you can see that if we can draw if i just erase one of the things so that it becomes clear to you now if you can see this graph okay this uh, red one so if i draw a line here it is analogous again to about 46 mm hg okay but the content of the total content of the carbon dioxide at this point is not 52 ml per dl but less than that around let's suppose it is around 50 mm uh, 50 ml per 100 ml of blood so you can say that if i am having 97.5 uh, 97.5 percent saturation of the hemoglobin and i am still changing the pco2 
from 40 to 46 mm HD still I am having a change of 6 mm HD in my PCO2 but because I am having a saturation of hemoglobin of about 97.5% I am having a change of only 48 ml of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of blood to 50 ml of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of blood that is only 2 ml carbon dioxide in 100 ml of blood only that much increment is there okay but in the second scenario where the 97.5% uh, is being changed to 75% of saturation of hemoglobin even though I am changing the PCO2 from 40 to 46 mmHg the change which is there in the total content of the carbon dioxide is 48 to 52 ml per 100 ml of blood that is an increment of about 4, 4 ml per 100 ml of 4 ml of carbon dioxide per 100 ml of blood so you can see that if you are decreasing the saturation of the hemoglobin with the oxygen the carbon dioxide dissociation curve is having a leftward shift that means with the same change of the pco2 the total content of the carbon dioxide in the blood would increase and that is what is called as an haldane effect so haldane effect says that if the effect of the PO2 on the CO2 transport that if you are having more PO2 then the carbon dioxide content would be less in the blood and if, if you are having less PO2 in that case the carbon dioxide content in the blood would be more. So the mechanism could be explained as such that at lungs what is happening that the oxygen binding where there is a high PO2. So what is happening when there is a high PO2, how it is affecting the carbon dioxide transport. So in response to the high PO2, you can see the total content of the carbon dioxide in the total uh, content of the carbon dioxide in the blood is less. That means that it is favoring the carbon dioxide diffusion from the blood into the lungs at the level of the lungs where the where there is high PO2. So what is the mechanism behind it? The mechanism is that the oxygen binding is going to destabilize the bond between the hemoglobin and the H plus ion which is going to release the H plus. Now this H plus is going to combine with the bicarbonate ion to form the carbon dioxide which is going to diffuse into the lung. And the second mechanism is that that oxygen binding is also going to destabilize the carboamino hemoglobin which is going to again promote the carbon dioxide release. So by these two steps with the same change in the PCO2 you are having a double release of the carbon dioxide from the tissues into the blood and from the blood into the lungs. So that is the importance of the Haldane effect which is approximately doubles the amount of the carbon dioxide released from the blood in the lungs and that could happen only when the blood is going to pick up the more carbon dioxide from the tissues. So at the tissue level the low PO2 is going to favor the more uptake of the carbon dioxide is going to increase the whole it is going to increase the uh, carbon dioxide content in the blood and at the lungs the high PO2 is going to favor the release of the carbon dioxide from the RBC from the blood into the lung and that is what is your Haldane effect. So I hope you are clear with this concept because this is a very good concept. It is totally conceptual and uh, uh, if you like this video please like share and subscribe and uh, please subscribe to our channel because we are not having as much subscribers. Uh, the ones who are watching our video are not actually subscribing our channel so please subscribe to our channel and share this video and comment on your suggestions for the upcoming videos till then keep learning